We are witnessing one of the most consequential Supreme Court decisions in decades, y'all. A ruling that introduces endless questions, ranging from bodily autonomy to the very nature of the Constitution that governs us. But what does this opinion and this dissent actually say? And what does it mean for our future? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. We have some folks here to unpack it with us. Mark Joseph Stern is a senior writer for Courts and Law at Slate. And my friend, Dr. Wendy Osefo, is with us. She is a Democratic strategist and professor of education at Johns Hopkins University. Welcome, welcome, welcome to you both. Mark, I want to start with you because there was a line that really stood out to me in Justice Alito's opinion. And I, I, I want to make sure I read it for folks. It says, quote, the Constitution makes no reference to abortion and no such right. It is implicitly protected by any constitutional provision, including the one on which the defenders of Roe and Casey now chiefly rely, the due process clause of the 14th Amendment. Mark, what is the logical conclusion of applying the standard? This, and what I mean there is that rights that are not explicitly addressed in the Constitution are more expendable. Right. So the court held that the only rights that it can protect under the Constitution are those that were firmly established and deeply rooted in the nation's history and tradition, specifically in 1868 when the 14th Amendment was ratified. Now, of course, the 14th Amendment was ratified by white men who did not care about women or believe that they had any kind of real legal stature. And the practices of of the time were generally horrific. Um, it, it still, interracial marriage bans existed. Uh, of course, gay people had zero rights. There was no right to use contraception. And yet, in past decisions, the court has established all of those liberties by saying that the definition of freedom can evolve with the times and that new generations can define the scope of individual liberty under the Constitution. This decision effectively repudiates all of those precedents. And so, it means, once again, that any right the court has recognized that didn't exist in 1868 is now up for grabs and very much vulnerable for Supreme Court reversal. I just got chills as you um, as you said that because, and we're talking about originalism here. I think a lot of times people throw out these terms and they're like, originalists, uh, these are constitutional originalists. But originalism says that if it wasn't in the con like we need to go back to the original understanding of, of what the founders meant at that time in the Constitution. And you just made it very plain, I think, for everybody at home, Mark, that they weren't talking about, they, they definitely weren't talking about me. They weren't definitely weren't talking about Wendy. You had to be a, a rich white man that owned land. Very specific. Wendy, when you, um, when you hear this, what do you, what, what do you think about this? Just as a, just as a black woman, it concerns me. <laughs> It concerns me. It concerns me as a black woman. It concerns me as a mother. It concerns me as the mother of two black boys. Because as, as Mark rightfully said, this goes back to what was established in 1868. And let's be clear, when you had Kagan, Sotomayor, and Breyer, at the end of their opinion, they stated they, they, they are looking at this with deep sorrow, not just for the women that will be affected, but for the court as a whole, because now we have entered into new territory. Anything that was not in existence prior to 1868 can now be reviewed. So let's talk about Brown versus the Board of Education. Let's talk about black people being seen as three-fifths of an individual. Let's talk about women not having the same rights as men. All of these things are now up for grabs. So I, I think that now it's now a clarion call for all people to take a step back and say, now what is next? Because this isn't just about women's issues. Now this is about what is the United States going to look like in the next few years? Because if people don't know the origin of this review, this wasn't done simply to, say, remove abortion. No, they were looking at a law in Mississippi to say that women can't abort after 15 weeks. While they were reviewing that, that's how we got here. So anything that is being reviewed is now up for grabs. And that should scare everyone, not just women. Yeah, everybody. I want to go to um, what Wendy just mentioned. Uh, this was a what I would argue a no holds bar take 
in the dissent. And we're going to put it up on the screen for folks. And again, this is from Justices Breyer, Kagan, and Sotomayor. And they wrote, the court reverses um, course today for one reason and one reason only, because the composition of this court has changed. The dissent goes on to say, today, the proclivities of individuals rule. The court departs from its obligation to faithfully and impartially apply the law. The, uh, Mark, Wendy just laid out the case that there are so this is all connected. Um, and I, I think it's very important to underscore that the Dobbs case that went before the Supreme Court that brought us this, you know, snatching back and rolling back of women's rights. It was not about overturning Roe. It was about a 15 week abortion ban. Talk to me a little bit about uh, Wendy's comments, Mark. Well, I think this really illustrates why we shouldn't believe the majority when it claims that this decision does not undermine any other rights. Uh, as the dissenters pointed out, the logic of the decision plainly refutes a whole slew of other rights. And uh, it, uh, the only reason this decision came to be is because there are now five justices who said, hey, we hate Roe and it's time to overrule it, even though we don't have to, even though this case doesn't even require us to. We're just going to throw it out the window. And so it's it's foolish to pretend that any other right is sacrosanct and really safe at this Supreme Court when all that matters is what five extremely conservative individual privileged attorneys believe to be the law of the land. I read the dissent as a warning, as a big red flag to all Americans that our rights are in jeopardy because the whims of a handful of lawyers who really don't believe in living constitutionalism or an evolving definition of equality, that they will be the ones to decide if we still get to be full and equal citizens under the law. And the signs so far are very ominous. Mm, Mark, I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, I want to read you all the last line of this dissent. And it says this, with sorrow for this court, but more for the many millions of American women who have today lost a fundamental constitutional protection, we dissent. Wendy, as a woman, as a mother, as a United States citizen, what do you tell people out there who, 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 are, who are asking you, what are you telling your students who are like, is this, what, what is this America that we're living in today? I'm telling my students to be honest with you how America is going to be shaped is going to change from the America that we once lived in. I mean, the truth of the matter is that once the balance of the court shifted and it became conservative, again, everything is going to change. This is not the beginning, nor will it be the end. And we have to be very aware of that. What I can also say is that we oftentimes tell people you need to go vote. I think that we have to take a step further. It's not just about voting. I think we also have to pay attention to different things. And I mean, we don't have enough time to cover them. But I mean, when we look at what's going on here, we have Justice Thomas saying that he wants to now look at gay marriage, same-sex marriage. I mean, so much is going to change as yeah. we know it. And we have to be able to be aware and stay woke, for lack of a better word, because things are going to change and they're not going to change in the ways in which we think we want them to. Mm. Dr. Wendy Osefo, Mark Joseph Stern, we could do this all day, y'all. Thank you all for day. coming here, breaking it down for the people at home. I appreciate y'all. Thank, Thank you. All right.